And uh, like a lot of good guys who do comedy, his stuff is based on social observation, what's going on around us. So would you welcome, please, Mr. Van Harris. You know, this week, all over the United States, kids are home from school. And all over the United States, parents are finding a new respect for teachers. <laughs> you know, in this city last year, the Board of Education bought $40,000 worth of movie projectors to use for educational purposes. And they didn't get to use one of these projectors because the teachers were afraid to turn off the lights. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that one school recently reported 80 cases of truancy in a single day. All teachers. <laughs> well, you can't blame them because they're dealing with a generation that's in a hurry to grow up. Really, if you look around, the kids are getting married younger and younger all the time. Why, my neighbor woke up the whole neighborhood this morning. She was yelling at her son, yelling so that everybody could hear. You're not going to get married till you finish your cereal. <laughs> go to weddings and see. See for yourselves. Next time you go to a wedding, take a look at how young the brides and grooms have become. I went to a wedding where I was sure the bride and groom were too young to get married. I could tell by the way they acted. He cried for 15 minutes because she got a bigger piece of cake. <laughs> well, kids are in a hurry to get married. Why? Why? Does a boy know what the danger signals are? Does a boy know what to look out for? Does a boy have sense enough to look into a girl's mouth to make sure her teeth are fixed? <laughs> oh, really? When you assume a bride, you assume a dental bill. My wife finally got through with the orthodontist. She's going to the periodontist. Took so long for the teeth to get straight, the gums got crooked. <laughs> when I married her, when I married her, she was wearing braces with rubber bands on her teeth, which is a new romp for all the orthodontists. They put hooks on the eye teeth and they stretch rubber bands across. And you go to a party and somebody tells you a joke and you laugh. And the guy standing across the room gets shot in the eye with a rubber band. <laughs> I didn't want to marry her. I had to marry her because my upper lip was thrown under her lower lip. <laughs> and I say this in all sincerity. I say that children must be warned about teenage marriages. And very fortunately, one of our leading psychologists recently spoke about this problem when he addressed a group of Cub Scouts and their wives. <laughs> and he told them the problem is that these kids are being given credits for knowing more than they actually know. They're learning advanced subjects in school. You know that I've got a 12-year-old niece who is studying motherhood in junior high school in biology. 12 years old, the class hasn't even finished the course yet. My sister, honey, describe motherhood to me. She says, well, the fertilization takes place in the oviduct where it is transferred to the omnion and suspended by the placenta for nine months. Then the store comes and drops the baby in the chimney. <laughs> tough thing to raise youngsters, I tell you this. I know because I have four of my own. We have four because we had three. Now, if you're wondering about that strange statement, I'll tell you, never stop with three. If you've got three, you've got a middle child. And a middle child is a problem. A middle child, they've written volumes on the misbehavior of the middle child. So we figured out, and the middle child's always a problem because the big one is always beating him up. And if he lays a hand on a baby, then you kill him. <laughs> So we figured out if we have a fourth and a middle one wouldn't know who the middle one is. <laughs> now we got two rotten kids in a middle. <laughs> well, the nicest part is that our fourth is a little girl. And there's nothing like a little girl, you know? I never realized it before. The relationship between a father and his little girl, it's just, it's just precious, it's beautiful. When a, when a little girl looks at her daddy, and she says, Daddy, the father becomes the king of the whole mountain. All of a sudden, you take on gigantic proportions. You know that my daughter took me to school for show and tell? <laughs> Walked in with my little girl arm in arm, and she said, Class, this is a daddy. And I stood there like a prehistoric ape. <laughs> and I looked at these kids, and they looked at me. And I tell you something, what they're learning is way over their heads. Like my oldest boy is learning political science. You should see this kid struts around the house. He says, Dad... I'm going to clean up the mess that the world is in. I said, start with your room. <laughs> my middle one comes home, my middle son comes home with C's and D's on his report card, tells his mother they're vitamin deficient. <laughs> so where are the sensible subjects like shop? Remember years ago, we used to walk into a shop in school and do something creative? 
with your hands. You know, I just built my family a summer cottage with what I learned in one year of wood shop in high school. A three-room summer cottage. And we're going to move in as soon as I figure out how to get this thing out of the basement. <laughs> and I'll ask my youngest son, who's a genius. My youngest son is named after my grandfather. We have a son named Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa is brilliant, brilliant. He's 12 years old. When Grandpa was two years old, he had memorized the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. But he couldn't talk, so nobody knew. <laughs> In fact, he just graduated from elementary school, and he was the class valedictorian. And I was so proud to see my 12-year-old son, Grandpa, standing there representing the entire sixth grade, wearing his best suit with a new shirt and tie, brimming over with confidence. He raised his hand in a dramatic gesture to wipe his nose on his sleeve. <laughs> And he spoke. He said, we stand here before you, ready to go forth as graduating members of the sixth grade. Many of us you see before you will go into law. Many of us you see before you will go into medicine. And the rest will go into the seventh grade. <laughs> but we all go forth to face a future of challenge and accomplishment and courage and hope without fear, without restraint, without deprecation, and without George and Stanley, because they got left back. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. In conclusion, I would like to just leave a little message for you, New Year's revelers. If you're going to drink and you intend to drive, play the radio loud so you don't hear the crash. <laughs> Thank you, Van. Van Harris. It's good to hear from bright new lines. It's Van Harris. So good.